Howdy all you delicious people. I'm here today to review Squid Game, a Netflix series. So I went in the first two episodes to kind of tip my toes in here to see if anybody is really interested in the show. I actually really liked it. Uh, I thought it was interesting to see the desperation of every single one of these people. Uh, it seems like they pick a handful of these people that are to be contestants upon this extreme uh, childish game of things. Uh, <clears throat> like something as simple as the very first episode is a tie into a game called Red Light, Green Light, which probably a lot of people have played. But they also focus on a game that may not be familiar to people at all. Uh, there was to be this game called Squid Game that they end up actually explaining in the uh, kind of intro of this show, where it's like, okay, I've never heard of that game before, but maybe eventually that's somewhere down the line, it's something that they introduce in the game, especially when there's a minimal amount of people left to play that game to see who is to make it at the end of all of this. So... I went into this show, and really we are to tend to focus on the guy who's in the center here, who is to be uh, 456. It seems like we center on him, but then eventually we start to see other characters the longer that we go about here, where we'll start to see certain characters like uh, 67 also be in 456's life uh, for a little bit. But eventually, once we see the first round of everybody kind of uh, playing this game, eventually we'll start to tie in other numbers of other people and eventually just get their backstory. Like, the guy who's to be on the very like end on this side here, who's to be number one, he actually has like a tumor inside of his head. And so, considering that he is to eventually be a person who's possibly going to die, regardless of this being involved in this game or not, we kind of have this guy who's just really just desperate to want to eventually be part of this game, so that way he can leave his loved ones something... And so, I don't know, I just really enjoyed the show. Like, you have at some points where all of a sudden, after these people are to pass the first round, all of a sudden this see-through piggy bank comes, like, comes down uh, to all of a sudden toss all this money, just tons and tons of money into this piggy bank. And they're like, wow! <laughs> but... Eventually, these people are to decide whether or not they want to stay in the game, and we'll eventually get to that. But then, eventually, once we get into the second episode, we start to much more focus on the other players of the game besides 456. And really, I know that these people have names, and eventually, I'll eventually try and say some of them, but like. And plus, also, I'm sure when they go back into the game, probably in episode three, that eventually we'll uh, see them have completely different numbers because that's bound to happen. Or I'm hoping that they would have the same numbers, but they probably won't. <coughs> Excuse me. Because there'll be every bit of random and whatever. So Eventually, when we review this again, I'll probably have a different kind of, like, way of maybe hopefully approaching this, or maybe I'll just figure out their names by then. Uh, but it's just, it's easy to just call out a number rather than actually trying to butcher a name. So, with that said, uh, yeah, so, teeing it up, what is this thing about? So, it seems that every person that you were to see here in these yellow jumpsuit things... Every single one of these people are to be massively in debt, just like horrifically in debt to where there's no way for them to easily squeak out of this. Uh, you have certain characters like uh, number 456, who is Shang Ki Hoon, uh, Xiong 
Ki Hoon. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Somewhere in there. Uh, we have Hoon, who is to uh, be a guy who is to bet on racehorses. And it seems that eventually he is to get uh, a big chunk of money to be able to pay people back. But then, eventually, it seems that this guy, again, is to be down on his luck. To where, all of a sudden, there is to be a guy that appears out of nowhere uh, who actually has no name. Which I'm like, oh my god, this is the guy from Train to Busan. Like, I've seen this guy. And all of a sudden, uh, you just have Hoon, who is all of a sudden playing this game with this guy and for every time Hoon is to lose uh this guy is to be able to just slap him in the face until eventually this guy does win and then he ends up getting like uh 100,000 yen or something like that I don't know the actual money equivalent of anything uh as far as yen in American dollars goes so I don't know the exchange rate of how much money these people actually got uh, because I'm sure, like, 4 million yen, I don't know the conversion in understanding what that is in American dollars, because, I don't know. I'm assuming 4 million yen is a lot of money, I'm assuming, or assessing. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, so... But yeah, so all of a sudden, this guy who is to eventually play this game with Hoon and slap the crap out of him a lot is to eventually just say, well, hey man, do you really want to make some money? And then, then all of a sudden, that's where it's to go. That's the hook of all of a sudden every single one of these people who are down and out on their money all of a sudden gets slapped by this guy or, or whoever these guys are. And then they drag them all in uh, through this van that they all have knockout gas. And they get dragged into this game. <clears throat> and they aren't really told exactly what's going on. But they just need to learn, like, learn trial by fire, basically. So that's the interesting part of this show so far is eventually we learn, these people have to learn by trial by fire what's going on, and then we have to learn what's going on. And then within the second episode, we get to focus more like on every single one of these people's lives who had survived, and we get to see them forcibly needing to desperately go back to wherever this game is, try to figure out how to be able to get back here because... Like, it's either uh, be killed in the game or be killed in the real world. So, yeah. So, let's get into it. Let's go into that double five time territory. Because I've kind of teed it up, but there's also, there's some mystery that I have to kind of, like, go into this also. So that way the spoiler version is a little bit more of something for me to say. So let's go out of our way to go into spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about that time you didn't to spoil these two episodes. So we have 456 uh, or Hoon, who is to supposedly be this, excuse me, this driver of sorts. A guy who is to probably... Uh, Maybe not be a limo driver, but some kind of concierge or some kind of, like, uh, driver of sorts that drives people around. It doesn't really seem like he gets an, uh, any kind of much of money from that. So it seems like his mother is to also be working also and do kind of odd jobs and stuff like that. So eventually he is to find out that his daughter's birthday is today because he almost forgot. So... What ends up happening is it seems that Hun is to go and go to this ATM to kind of steal from his mother, in all honesty, to try to go to the racetrack to try and uh, be able to win so he can go off and 
seemingly give his daughter a really good birthday present. That's what we assume at first. So he ends up winning in the racetrack. Eight and six uh, was the uh, numbers of his daughter's birthday. And coincidentally, they were to have won. So Hun is to give this uh, woman that kind of gave him this money he ended up giving her 10,000 yen back to just be like, hey, don't spend it all in one place. So, all of a sudden we have Hoon who's like calling his daughter and saying like, hey, like, uh, make a big fat list of what you want for your birthday dinner and we'll see if we can get that all done. And he's like so happy and so excited. All of a sudden, we have Hoon who's uh, eventually going... And noticing that there are some guys after him who are to want money from him. And so all of a sudden Hoon is running off, bumping into the girl who is 67, who is actually <clears throat> uh, Seiya Bayok. Bayok? I'm probably saying that impronouncingly. I realize that. Uh, Sayi Bayok? Somewhere? Am I in the ballpark? Uh, so, this girl is number 67. Well, let's leave it at that. And so, Hoon ends up bumping into her, and then he ends up running off into the bathroom. And so, these guys stop him, and so <clears throat> they're like, hey man, where's my money? So, who needs to mention that he has 4 million yen, and he'll give him that money if they go away. Because these guys are punching this guy in the nose, uh, to where there's blood coming out of his nose. So, Hoon is to just kind of look for his 4 million yen, to all of a sudden realize that that girl who was 67 was a pickpocket, and that he lost all of his money. He's like, oh, crap. So, <clears throat> Hoon is to desperately tell these guys, like, hey, man, like, I will give you back your, your, your money. Like, I'll guarantee it. And they're like, okay, well, how about now, like, you sign this paper. You sign this paper saying that if you don't give us this money by X amount of days, like we'll sell your liver, we'll sell your kidney, we'll sell your whole entire, we'll sell your whole entire body off, uh, to get the money that we need. So, Hoon is like, well, what what pen do I use to sign all this? And so it's like, well, hey man, poo, like, and so <laughs> this guy's nose is bleeding again. So it's like, sign it with your blood. And so he ends up like putting his own blood in. To, to sign for it. So, so we push on. So this guy is trying to go back to the woman uh, behind the counter to ask for the 10,000 yen back. And she's like, mm, no. So Hoon eventually is, like, of course, empty pockets yet again to eventually find this guy in the station who is all of a sudden going to tell uh, this guy Hoon, it's like, hey, how about I make a bargain with you? How about we play this game together, and if I, uh, if you win, you get uh, 100,000 yen. And if I win, then, like, you'll have to pay that to me. So immediately... Hoon goes, and, and this is the guy from Train to Busan, and I was, like, so excited. I'm like, dude, I've seen him before. Yeah, I love Train to Busan. That was a good movie. So, anyways, we have it consistently where this other guy is to consistently just beat um, 456. So, Hoon, and so we have Hoon who's like, well, I don't have the money to actually pay you. And so the guy is like, well, hey, how about this? How about every time that I win, uh, instead of you paying me, how about I slap the crap out of you? And so Hoon is like, okay, 
go ahead. And so he freaking just slaps the crap out of him. And you just see this guy losing consistently to this guy. And he just continues to get slapped over and over and over. And there's montages about it. And so all of a sudden, 456 finally wins one. And so now Hoon is wanting to like, okay, I'm going to slap the crap out of you. I'm like, mm. And then the guy's like, here's your money. It's like you won. And he's like, oh yeah, the money. Like, I just really just wanted to just, you know. <laughs> so the guy is like, well, like it seems that, um, it seems that like you're interested probably in maybe doing something just more than just this game. Like, cause all of a sudden this guy in the station starts rambling off every single debt that this guy is to have. And so 456 is just like, okay, how is it that this guy knows this? So this guy goes on is like, Hey, like here's this card that I can give you. That's to uh, have you call this this uh, place if you're interested in getting a lot more money for not having to do a much not having to do much work. So all of a sudden, uh, Hoon is to eventually hear from his mother because his daughter does not tell him. Uh, so. Hoon goes off and tries, like, to play this crane game to try and get uh, this toy for his daughter. And he ends up getting this black box that he ends up finding later when she opens it is a gun that lights up as a lighter. <laughs> what kind of a goofy gift is that? Um, but he didn't realize it. He didn't open it up. He didn't see what it was. So Hoon tries to give this as a gift to his daughter to eventually find out that it's just a crappy gift. But he's like, oh, well, I guess I can't even have you hold this because you're not old enough. So eventually Hoon is to mention to his daughter, like, hey, I'll give you a really good gift next year. And his daughter is like, yeah, you will. No, because uh, Hoon, when going home, ends up finding out uh, from his mother that uh, his daughter is to eventually go to America and leave forever. And so Hoon uh, is to eventually just go like, well, I need to have a substantial flow of money if maybe I can go and fight for custody for my daughter and keep her here so I can have her forever because... Uh, he looks at pictures at her of her and just like, it's like, well, I guess I should probably just call these people like and just see what what I have to do to win this money. So uh, 456 eventually goes and is waiting at this spot for this tr for this van to pick him up. All of a sudden, it seems that everyone in this van is bizarrely sleeping because we end up finding out when this van is to close, all of a sudden there's to be this gas that is to be put throughout the van and, of course, knocks Hoon out. We end up finding that the driver has his gas mask on, hence why, like, you don't actually see the guy with the gas mask. So, all of a sudden, Hoon is to wake up and he is to have this green jumpsuit with the number 456 on there and so all of a sudden he's in he's in this like this little uh this little bed of his and so he ends up kind of jumping out of it and so all of a sudden there is to be this guy who's number one who's to be this elder who is to have had a tumor in his brain and so all of a sudden, one is trying to count everyone who is there. And so 456 is telling one, it's like, why are you counting who is all here? Like, it obviously says on that board that there's 456 people here. 
and obviously I must be the very last one, and obviously you're the very first one, so, like, hey, good for us, right? High five, <laughs> kind of thing going on, and so one is just like, well, I'm counting because, like, it's to try to avoid any kind of, <clears throat> like, Alzheimer's or any kind of other diseases, like, if I think I can count out things perfectly, then I should be able to, like, avoid any kind of horrible, like, things kind of later down the road. And so 456 is like, okay, that's interesting. So we eventually have, at some point, people starting to bump into one another that obviously have some past going on with one another. Um, it seems that eventually 450, 456 and 218, which you see here, the guy with the glasses, we end up finding out that he is some, like, vlaadi da like, rich guy that it seems that he had this, like, massive fortune, and all of a sudden he ended up, uh, like, making a bet with somebody based off of what his future would be. And so it seems like this guy has gotten massively in debt just because of him betting on his own future, which is kind of weird, that, um, that, like, that was just kind of, like, fascinating to me, but that's what it is. So, all of a sudden we have 67, who is to be the, uh, the thief from 456, all of a sudden bump into this guy who is uh, 101 that we end up seeing at the end here that 101 or 101 is to be this guy that we end up finding is to be this kind of loan shark of a guy that is ending up squeezing certain businesses for money. And so it seems that 101 has worked with 67 trying to squeeze money out of people or trying to pickpocket people to get money out of them. And so we have 101 and 67 like fighting it out right in this situation. And so all of a sudden 456 who recognizes 67 is to grab her and be like, hey, you stole money from me. And then like we have all these people that are just kind of like annoying people from wherever parts of Rung of Life that they have before they came here. So, all of a sudden, now we have it where uh, there is to be these guys with these, like, PlayStation logos on their head, and they're in these, like, black masks of things, but you see these, like, these squares, triangles, cir circles, like, common shapes that are, like, plastered over their head. If you've seen a PlayStation controller, you'll get the comparison of which that I made there. Or if you haven't, you can Google that right away and, and realize what I'm saying. So, <laughs> so these guards that are to be dressed in these like red jumpsuits with the PlayStation logo upon their head. So all of a sudden they're to come in here and they are to have every single person consent to what they are doing here. Even though that they have been drugged, even though they have been... Uh, forced to come here after the fact because technically they have been kidnapped. Still, like, they have to agree to what they're doing or otherwise they aren't going to be playing this game, let's just say. What they're agreeing to, they don't really know. But I think the second time around, when eventually people will come back because they probably forcibly have to, they'll have to just know what they're getting themselves into where a lot of people won't. So eventually, maybe they might warn other people that end up coming into this game what they're really in for, which is basically death at some point in time. So going into this, so we have everybody who's to sign away and consent to play this game. And so it's like, okay, great. So now... They are all to uh, eventually go through this weird room that looks like a weird, bizarre like painting where you just see these stairs and these walls and these whatever all over the place. It looks kind of visually amazing, 
but it also kind of looks like what happened at the end of the movie Labyrinth, the Disney or the Jim Henson movie Labyrinth, where you just kind of see these stairs all over the place and like people are just like, where am I going? And like, it's all over the place. So all of a sudden these people are to make it uh, through to these double doors that end up opening and we end up being placed right here into this scenario. So, like, these people are to... Because technically this tree here is on the opposite end of where these people are. Like, this this girl and this tree are kind of up on the opposite end of where these people actually are. This actually isn't an exactly correct way of how this actually looks. But... It looks like that because poster. So imagine if these people were, far, were faced the opposite way and going this way to this doll. That's what it looks like in the actual show. So all of a sudden these people are to like, there's some people to be just kind of excited about being a part of this game. So we have some people that realize that this is all of a sudden red light, green light. And everybody's like, wait a minute, what? Like, so we're playing a childish game? Like, this doesn't make any sense. And so all of a sudden it gets going and there's a lot of people not moving, but there's like two people that all of a sudden start to move. And 218 realizes that there's actually a timer that all these people have to make it to be across this line within like 20 some odd minutes. And it's a good thing that he noticed that because freaking no one else really cared or thought to care. They thought they had all the time in the world. So we all of a sudden have two guys kind of go ahead and all of a sudden there's to be this one guy with kind of like orange, like orange or blonde kind of hair that Eventually, all of a sudden, is to accidentally move a little bit. And so he ends up getting shot, falling to the ground. And so we all of a sudden have the other guy who ends up getting closer to the guy who ended up getting shot. And everybody was, like, kind of dead, uh, like, from where they were. Because they're like, what the heck happened to that guy? What was that sound? And so... All of a sudden, the other guy gets closer to the other guy who ended up falling over. And he ends up finding out that he's like, oh my god, this guy was killed. And so, this guy starts running off and running into this crowd of people who have to forcibly also get shot also. Because, like, they all of a sudden um, were freaking out also with this guy. And... So all of a sudden we just see this massive amount of people that all end up getting killed because they all moved. They all moved. They all just were banging against the, the doors to try to get out of this game, but they can't. So a lot of people, huge amounts of people in this process hugely got killed because they didn't know what was going on, but they're forced to play this game anyway. So... We start having these people crazily uh, trying to make it. And you just see people getting shot in the head, shot in the chest. Uh, and there's some people that are desperately like, hey, man, I got shot, but I'm still alive. So please help me. And they're like, dude, freaking you're on your own. So. So we have uh certain people that are trying to mess up other people like we have 67 who's behind 101 who is to just kind of like be right behind him to maybe mess him up or to eventually have him possibly get killed off here um because of them fighting earlier so but eventually they make it and so eventually like 456 ends up meeting this one uh this one guy who is to be uh Ollie I believe who is 199 uh who I'm hope I'm getting that right I'm probably not it's bound to happen 
So, all of a sudden, 456 ends up almost tripping and falling onto the ground. And Ollie, who's, I'm thinking, 199, ends up catching 456, like, right as the person's head was to turn around and was to, like, try to almost kill both of them off. So, like, one guy is holding one other guy, and he's just like, mm, come on, <laughs> like, move! <laughs> so... 456 and uh and the guy that was holding him just narrowly just be able to, just is able to get it across the finish line before the time ends and so everyone who is to have been frozen just all gets picked off and all gets killed off by the time they reach zero so i'm like man that kind of sucks if people were still alive by the end of that like i think it kind of sucks that they that they had a time lapse but I guess really, when really looking at it, like they weren't going to have, if everyone figured this out, not 400 and some odd people were all going to make it out of here. And they weren't going to all focus upon all the people who like, eventually there's just going to be a lot of people that are just going to have to get killed off in the show. And like, maybe they're going to have to eventually uh, kill all those people. So Really, that's what happens in the first episode is uh, to. Because uh, in the second episode. For the people who have won and they didn't realize what this game actually was because nobody actually told them what it what it was, life or death. In the second episode, we have all of a sudden there are to be certain rules where. We have 218 who is to mention that uh, people could actually vote to be able to leave the game if they wanted to. And so, since it seemed like everybody is all of a sudden starting to beg to go back home because they're like, hey, whatever I have to do to get the money, I'll get the money, but... Like, I just, like, I have a I have a kid at home. I have a wife at home. I have a this at home. Blah, 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 blah. Everybody starts crying after, uh, after even just winning the first round. And so what ends up happening is the, the hooded guys are to showcase to them how much money that they would have won in the first round. They kind of just heavily dump this huge batch of money that was placed in this see-through piggy bank to make them consider whether or not they want to continue because that money is just going to be sent to all of the people that lost instead of being placed into their bank account. So eventually they also are to be told how much money that they could quite possibly make when they are to complete all six games and wins after all of this, how much money they are really going to make. And supposedly it's going to be like, uh, like a billion yen or something like that. So they're like, hmm, interesting. So, but everyone is going to have a chance to leave or not. And so they have these two toggles, this green uh, toggle is to keep them there, or the red toggle is to eventually let them all go home. So, everyone has the chance to vote. Luckily, there is an, uh, there is an odd number left. <laughs> so, all of a sudden, people start voting. They go green, red, green, red, bloom, blue. <laughs> so, everybody just starts voting. And so it basically comes down, of course it does, to the very last vote. And so we have this guy who's just like, one is to be the guy that has to vote last. And I'm like, dude, he's the one that wants to be here more than everyone else. Like, shouldn't he just be saying like, heck yeah. But no, he ends up voting red. Uh, maybe because he didn't realize what he was doing, or maybe he had a lot of lives in his hands, so he probably just voted red. And so everyone went home. Everyone went home. 
And so everyone went home, but supposedly there might have been a opportunity for all these people to come back to eventually play this game again. So all of a sudden, all these uh, guys are to go home. We have 456 who is going to the police station and telling them what had all happened. And the police doesn't believe this guy and think that he's a drunk because Hoon ends up giving them uh, the card of which that he was given. And so the police end up calling back this number to eventually just get some random woman. And so the police officer is like, dude, you're drunk, go home. So basically every single one of these people are to find out eventually that them going home is just as bad as them doing this game. And so it seems that every single person is to eventually find out that they need to just stick it out into this game anyways. We have like 101 who end up who ends up in the second episode going and having some guys who want to dissect him uh, to get all the loan or to get all the money that he owes them. So this guy is basically running through running from these people that want to kill him. And so he forcibly decides he's going back into the game because it's either he dies in the game or he dies outside with uh, him being a loan shark that just isn't quite getting the money that he needs uh, for these people to pay, uh, to pay them back. So we end up finding out that 218 had basically, uh, like betted his like future. And so we have 218 that has this huge amount of money that he owes. And so 456 is just like, well, Hey man, you can probably file bankruptcy, right? And 218 is like, well, I used my, like, mother's, like, business and everything like that as collateral. He's like, oh, crap. <laughs> like, man, you have just, like, you have just ruined yourself, man. Like, but this guy is supposedly such a genius or so smart. But, like, it seems that he's like, yeah, you are in a heaping helping of, sh like, <laughs> you have just... Ruined your life uh, to where eventually we end up finding out that 218 can be possibly tied to a number of embezzlement or fraudery or any number of kind of things uh, that eventually his mother ends up getting taken into the police because of what this guy uh, could be possibly accused of doing. Let me take this off here. And also let me reset for a second here. Yeah. So. We also have this detective uh, in episode two. I'm not going to go and try to look for who it is. Uh, we have this detective that is to have found out that his brother had died, I guess, during this uh, during this game. And so. This detective ends up going to his brother's apartment to eventually see all of his items there. And so all of a sudden this detective is trying to figure out what had happened to his brother, which all of a sudden eventually leads him in this episode to talking to 456, who in this episode, 456 has... Uh, eventually realized that his mother had gone into the hospital for emergency reasons. Uh, we end up finding out that she is a diabetic and quite possibly she is going to lose her foot soon. That eventually her foot is probably going to have to be forcibly chopped off because diabetic. Um, and we also find that she's just really unhealthy and so like 456 just wants to try to figure out how he can get some money together to be able to uh, do the surgery that his mothers need to help her. Uh, so 
456 is to try and desperately go to his ex-wife to beg her for money. And so it seems that his ex-wife is to be broke, but maybe her new husband has money. So we now are on 456 that is desperately having to ask his ex-wife's new husband for money. And so eventually... Hoon is just like, God, I just don't want to ask this guy. And so Hoon goes off after kind of seeing his daughter uh, who is to appear here. So Hoon walks off and all of a sudden the new hubby is to come down there and is to give this guy money. Just be like, okay, this is basically like go away money because eventually me and my family are going to go to the go to America and you're never going to see your daughter again. So this is basically like see you later money because you're never going to see us again. So all of a sudden Hoon is to take this 2 million uh, yen that this guy has to give him and just throw it back at him like, well, hey man, money doesn't solve everything. So Hoon just walks off and he is just in this part of just like, Man, I'm never going to be able to help anybody. I'm never going to be able to, like, make it. Like, this just freaking sucks. And so we have this detective that ends up appearing uh, to talk to Hoon. Just be like, hey, I'm looking for my brother. And he's been gone for several days now. And you ended up talking about some game of something that my brother could have been involved in. Hmm, I'm interested in what's going on here. So... Hoon is like, dude, I'm, I can't help anybody. Like, how do you think I'm even going to be able to help you? Because Hoon is mentioned, like, yeah, I was drunk. Like, I wasn't, I, I, I was obviously, like, uh, none of this is true. So Hoon goes off and forcibly decides to re-enter into this game, as well as a number of people. Like, we have uh, Ollie, who... Eventually is to go back to his job where his job can't even pay him the wages that he needs that he has already worked because this job he has a boss where his boss is to basically tell him like hey man like like I'm broke too like hey I just don't have the money even though all of a sudden he has this envelope with a fat, fat stack of cash so I'm sure what's what's going on is we have this boss lying to people saying that, oh man, I have no money whatsoever, but he's pocketing the money himself and leaving everybody else to just continue to work and get no money to eventually see how long it's going to take before these people get no money <laughs> to be able to do any of these things. So Ali is to all of a sudden take this guy's hand and put it through this machine and take and and run with this guy's money to eventually go back to his wife where uh like they have a dialogue between one another and so that really just forces ali to as well as everyone else who like was not going to be part of this game eventually has to be forcibly going back to it we also have a moment where 456 was talking to one they end up bumping into one another just in some part of the street and so, like, hey, I know you. Hey, I know you, too. And so, all of a sudden, uh, 456 is like, hey, man, I don't have any money for food. Like, uh... And we have one who's like, hey, man, don't worry about it. Like, they had, like, they shared some, some, uh, some ramen noodle or something together. And so, uh, oh, we also had 218, and we had Ali, who were kind of dropped off together, because everybody was just to be chucked out of this van and they were like all tied up. And so 456 and 67 were tied up together. And so 456 helped 67 untie herself. And then she ended up just running off or basically trying to run off because she wasn't going to help 456 untie himself because she's like, if I untie you, you're just going to haggle me for that money. Why should I untie you? And so he's like, 
Like I promise, like a promise on my mother's grave that I will, uh, like I will not haggle you for this money. So 67 unties the guy's arms and he immediately starts haggling for the money. And like he's jumping around because his legs are still tied. And so he's haggling her for this money and he ends up falling over. And so like the girl's just like, man, your mother's life must not mean anything to you. So this girl just runs off. And so uh, 218 and Ali uh, are eventually to get dropped off. And so it seems like 218 has run out of minutes of his phone. So he ends up going and paying uh, four minutes for his phone, I believe. And so Ali gets to uh, be able to use this guy's phone quickly. He's like, hey, man, like, I'll quickly uh, use your phone. Uh, and so 218 kind of offers this guy, like, hey, man, like, I'll give you money for, like, food also because I'm sure you're hungry. So eventually 218 finds out that this guy is like quite a distance away from where they are. And so 218 is like, hey man, like, do you need like bus fare or something to get, get home? The guy is like, no, 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 no. Like I can't pay you back. And 218's like, hey man, don't worry about it. Just take this money so we can go home. And he's like, oh, thank you. Like, I really appreciate it. Like, hey, don't worry about it. So, like, God, there's there's some nice people, but then also we end up finding that there's, like, some not-so-nice people, because eventually, like, all these people are to desperately need money, and so all of them go into desperate means and have to force people out of their money one way or the other. We have 67, who's to eventually get uh, some information from her boss, or from a person that is to basically order her around, uh, because she needs to get money to get her uh, parents over here. Uh, and so it seems like this guy is offering a price that's way too high to get her parents to where she is. And so this girl eventually tells this guy, hey, like, I'll get you the money that you need. But like, this is like some crappy thing that you're doing that... Every single time the price is going up, every single time, because there's some expensive fee that all of a sudden, like, you are to increase here. So, the girls basically say, it's like, okay, I'm going to be able to get this fee for you, this money for you, but once I do, like, if you don't give me what I want, like, your head, or I, she says that she's going to slice his, uh, slice his head, or slice his neck, whichever. But anyways, so towards the very end of this episode, because everybody is in desperate means, every single person is to eventually decide to re-go back to this game because nobody has the means to be able to pay any of their debts. So they're all forced to go back. One is to already mention, like, dude, I'm going to go back. Like, dude, I'm going to die anyways. I might as well go back in there because I know if, like... If I'm out here, like, it's just as bad as being in there. So I might as well go back. So all of a sudden, like, everybody else is just still also have that consensus. So we all of a sudden have, uh, at the tail end of this movie, or the tail end of this second episode, everybody eventually goes back. And so everyone is going to eventually risk their lives to eventually get more and more money. Because they didn't get anything. They forfeited their right to get the money when they stopped going and doing the game. So they all realize now that, that was a mistake and that they all have to go and play this game for however long, live or die or whatever, to get the money that they need to be able to finally pay off their debts or whichever. It seems like there's some people where no matter how much money that this is going to at the end offer them, which you don't really know if there's going to be a real legitimate payout of, of all here. And you don't really know if every single one of uh, whoever is to make it towards the end of this, if everyone is to eventually 
pay off all their debts and then some who knows but anyways with that said i'm going to get out of here i really enjoyed this episode hopefully this wasn't too confusing for everybody hopefully i was simple enough about this uh there might have been something that i might have forgot along the way or i might have not exactly talked about but meh, like that's bound to happen there's a lot of stuff going on within these two episodes uh but yeah like it's a fun show. I like it so far. We'll see where this heads in other episodes. Uh, if people are interested, uh, eventually I'll probably get in to more of this. So, yeah. I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.